there rock stars, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here, and if you are a new guitar player or you've been playing guitar for a while and you are still having issues, you've come to the right video because this video is going to talk about the five top things I've been teaching now for 30 years, the, the top five things that every single guitar player in the history of guitar players on earth and throughout the solar system should ever know if they're going to play guitar. Okay, these are the top first five things that every guitar player should know, okay? I have them written down. I'm gonna go into um, some detail with you and um, I'll even uh, point you to some other places where you can get even more detail since this is, I wanna get this information to you quick. So number one, you're not born with talent. It takes some practice, okay? So this is before ever touching the guitar. Um, this is not a pep talk, it's truth. And if you don't understand this concept, you will, I promise you, you're gonna fail at guitar. And I know that because I've seen it happen over and over again. And I've seen other folks that take this information and they run with it and they're immediately on the path to success, okay? And then with practice, of course, they're successful. And that is, you're just not born with talent. There is nobody that's born with talent. I don't care if you're uh, Michael Jordan or if you're a, a great NASCAR driver or a great guitar player or whatever. If you take any of these people at some point in their life, they were terrible at what they did, what they're doing now professionally. Every single person, there's not one person you can name that wasn't terrible at some point. Even Mozart, okay? Mozart started early, but the guy was not playing at three years old, he was playing at four years old, so it was time where he actually had to learn. So don't fall into this trap that you need to have a bunch of talent. It's mucky muck, it's okay? You do not have to have talent, okay? It has everything to do with practicing and having the resources to, to do this, okay? And me, I will hopefully be a resource for you, okay? So, um, if you want more information about that, if you wanna hear a longer talk about that, um, click here, my talent versus practice video, it will help a ton, okay? Um, number two, your hands are not too small. I get this all the time. My hands are too small. I don't have giant hands, okay? Some of the best jazz players have short little stubby fingers and they play phenomenally and they can do great things, okay? When you learn to use your hand on the guitar, uh, all of a sudden you will feel like your hand is not small anymore, okay? Because now you're able to do things. But when you just take your hand, you wrap it around the guitar neck, this is a very unnatural stance or place the way, the way you're holding your hand. So um, it's not going to feel natural at all for anybody in the beginning, okay? As you do it more, it magically starts feeling better, okay? Uh, I know for some of you, you're saying, well, that's a big duh, but most of you, you're like, oh, this is new information to me. And it was to me in the beginning, okay? Because it just felt weird. And it will, and it does for everybody. Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, everybody. It felt weird in the beginning, and as they got to playing more, they got better and better and better at it. You can listen to old tapes of Eddie Van Halen playing, and he wasn't very good. Just like Jimi Hendrix wasn't either in the beginning, or Stevie Ray Vaughan. They got good over time, okay? So your hands are not too small. Uh, do I have a video for this? I think I do. If so, you're gonna click here. If not, you can click there, nothing's gonna happen, okay? Um, all right, so what else? Oh, how to hold the guitar. Let's talk about this for a minute because uh, this seems to be a problem a lot and folks are looking for smaller guitars and how to hold the guitar and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, the way I'm holding it here is like a traditional folk way. Now, you could play it more like a classical guitar player would where you put it on the opposite knee and the guitar is being held by your knee and this arm and your chest. And that holds the guitar a little bit more steady, but it put your back in a position where you really have to hold it upright and, and, and hold your back kind of stiff and that can wear you out after a little while. So once you, although you, you'll be in a better position to play, but once you, um, you know, once you can get a hold of this basic folk position, uh, this is a lot more comfortable. Okay, I'm not saying the classical is not right. I was in classical school for three years and it's definitely a very helpful way to hold the guitar, but it will wear your back out after some time. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this part of the guitar, whether it's uh, electric or acoustic, and put that on your thigh. Tuck it in, bring it into you. You don't want it out here. 
you know, because that guitar's way out there. I don't even, you know, I'm going to need a passport to get to it. So I'm bringing it here. Now I can look down. I can see right there. And I'm bring my arm over it, okay? It can be back here. It can be here. It's, it's really a matter of preferences, a matter of preference. I've seen guitar players, you know, especially here in Nashville, they'll come out here. So um, there's all different ways to do this. Now, um, once this is established, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's not, you know, flimsy. It's not, you got to tuck that in there. And then what that does is that allows this hand to not have to grab onto it like a shovel. We don't want to do that because then that's going to limit how you're playing, your fretting and that sort of thing. By the way, all of these things that I'm telling you right now, uh, they should all be on YouTube. If they're not, go to your guitar or go to the Unstoppable Guitar System dot uh, the uh, Unstoppable Guitar System dot com. The link is below. You can get in there for one dollar, especially if you're just starting off. It's a step by step. This is what you do today kind of system. If you cannot mess up. If you want to play guitar, check it out. You can check it out for one dollar and get in there and get privy to all my videos. Okay. So if it's not if click in here there's not something there you can definitely go there and even get higher quality videos okay so we got to how to hold the guitar basic fingering technique we're going to talk about this now i do have a, a video for it you can click here um, for the basic fingering technique but i'm going to go over it very quickly with you there's three or four things that you want to be able to do always doesn't matter the style of the guitar you're playing you want to make sure that you're playing on your fingertips always 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 play on your fingertips do not play on the pads this does not count as a fingertip I'm talking the tips of your finger. So if you're looking at your hand like that, those are the tips. Take a little Sharpie and draw it right at the tip. And then this way, a little dot. So then when you're looking at your hand and you're playing a chord or something like that, uh, even a note, and if you see that dot looking up at you, then you know you need to curl your fingers more so that that dot is actually pressing the string. Okay, you wanna make sure that this last knuckle is curled as much as possible. You don't wanna like, you know, have a conniption here. Um, white knuckling it or anything, but you really want to make sure that you get in the habit of curling that last knuckle because later on when we're playing chords, we need to be able to clear all the strings. And if we're playing on the pads of our fingers or we'd have that, this knuckle not curled very much, our chords are going to sound like this. And really that's not a chord at all because I have two notes playing. The chord is three or more notes. So, so that's what happens. So that's a badly played chord. Now watch how subtle. This is a well-played chord. So it's a very subtle thing, but you'll learn this, okay? And by the way, at yourguitarstage.com, the free ebook, if you sign up for that free ebook, you will get my, my exercises for doing it, and you'll also get these books for free every time I make them available on Amazon, which I do that several times a year. So check that out, Your Guitar Stage. The link is below. So we got that basic finger technique uh, as far as playing on your fingertips. Make sure that you've got that last knuckle curled. Take your thumb, make sure it's on the back of the neck like this, as opposed to thumbing and having your thumb over the top of the neck. Now you've probably seen some of your favorite guitar players doing that. That's because they've been playing for a long time. And as you get to playing more, even I'll do that, I'll have my thumb over the top of the neck, okay? But that's because our technique is developed and we can go back to what's really comfortable, which is hanging your thumb over the neck. In the beginning, you really can't do that. It's the kiss of death for all guitar players. So don't do it. Take your thumb, drop it in the back of the neck. Will it feel uncomfortable? It most certainly will. Is it gonna hurt? Are you gonna need to call an ambulance? Nope. But uh, it's it's gonna just feel awkward, okay? So don't, uh, don't be a wuss. Just put your thumb on the back of the daggone neck and you're gonna get it, okay? I'm telling you this because I want you to be successful and I don't want you to use excuses to not play guitar because there are no legitimate excuses. I've seen a guy with no arms play guitar really, really well. I'm not joking. Plays with his feet, you can YouTube it, search for, you know, I don't know how you'd search it. Guy with no arms playing feet, uh, playing guitar. Guy with no arms playing guitar with his feet and he does it with his toes and he's fantastic. Plays a lot better than some people I've seen with two arms and, and hands. Okay, so what else? Um, okay, the finger technique. Uh, bring your thumb down because what this, see notice if my thumb's up here, I don't have a very big hand all of a sudden, but if I drop my thumb down, oh, my hand just got huge, all right? So drop your thumb down, get your hand in front of the neck. That technique is going to help a ton. It's gonna feel like you're walking on your tiptoes in the beginning. It's gonna feel really awkward, especially when you get to your third and fourth finger, like in my exercise two in that free ebook at yourguitarstage.com. 
It's gonna, um, it's gonna feel really awkward. It does for everybody until it doesn't anymore. You do it a bit, it's gonna feel great. Um, and the last thing is, as far as fingering technique, make sure you're right behind that fret, okay? Now, last thing is picking technique really quickly. Let's talk about that. What I want you to do is use the pick rest exercise. By the way, um, if I didn't say already the finger, te the finger technique, basic fingering technique, you can go here um, for an extended version of that. Or for the better videos, unstoppableguitarsystem.com. Okay, and the uh, basic picking technique. So here what you wanna do is we wanna do what's called a pick rest. I talk about this in that book. Is you wanna take any uh, string, it doesn't matter, and what you wanna do is pick it and rest the pick on the next string, like this. Notice the pick is plucking the string and then it's resting on the next string. What happens at the beginning is a lot of people will do this. They'll go, you know, they'll pick out or they'll pick down and then out. And what happens is they're coming out here now and then they have to come all the way back and that creates inaccuracies. So what you wanna do is you wanna do the least amount of movement as possible. Not something to overthink right now. If you just practice this exercise, it's gonna help a lot. But what happens is when you do a lot of superfluous movements with the guitar, it puts you in a bad position where you have to come back and there's a lot more margin for error if you do that, okay? So those are the five things, my friend. If you want them more in detail, like I say, go to the Unstoppable Guitar System. If you don't want good stuff for free, you don't have to do that. You can peruse YouTube and get distracted by uh, booby girls and, uh, and cat tricks and stuff like that all day long. That's fine too. Uh, but let me help you. I'm here to help you. I've been doing this for like 30 something years. I love it. I love teaching guitar. I love playing guitar. Uh, I have several books, obviously. I've got a website, many websites, and um, this is what I do for a living. So please, let me help you. I have tons of free stuff for you. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff. So uh, hit me up there. If you have any questions, let me know here in the comments, any other place. Um, and as always, I'm a big animal lover, so please spay and neuter your animals and be kind to one another. We can change this world one person at a time, starting with me. See ya.